Liddell here from ARC Hi-Fi. Today we're going to look at the various reissues of John Coltrane's classic, Blue Train. Blue Train is probably my favorite, either my first or second favorite all-time jazz album. It's right up there with Kind of Blue. And I have purchased countless of reissues through the years. Um, the one thing is, I don't own a, uh, an original or I don't own an, even a 70s Blue Label copy. All my editions have been um, reissues. So uh, I sat down this week, took some notes, compared all the issues, reissues that I have, and I thought I'd share those with you. Then rank them uh, from my uh, least favorite to my favorite. And my least favorite will probably surprise you. Maybe not to all the record collectors and audiophiles, but you, you may be surprised on this. As I said before, Blue Train was released in 1958. Blue Note Records, it's certified gold. It's been reissued countless of times throughout the world. And uh, there's many copies floating out there. Now, if you have an original or an early pressing in decent shape, it's going to fetch some big bucks on the used market. According to Pop Psych, the most expensive edition of Blue Train that they have tallied is uh, $6,300 or $6, from a South Korean seller. Uh, the album, according to the description, was a first pressing and it was in uh, excellent condition. So uh, most of the early pressings, mono, uh, are asking or going for between $1,500 and $4,500, give or take the edition, the, you know, if it's a promotional copy, stereo, mono, what have you. So this is one highly sought after album among collectors. So let's get started. My least favorite is not going to, it may surprise some of you, but it's not going to surprise probably most of you, is the uh, 1990s Rudy Van Gelder CD editions. Um, you would think, well, Rudy Van Gelder was the original recording engineer, and he was the original mastering engineer. He would bring his magic to, um, to the digital world in the 90s. That's not the case. Uh, the CD sound, sounds harsh. Uh, it's very forward, super loud. It's just, it's, it's a terrible listen, especially if you compare it to some of these other editions that are out there. Um, I know a lot of people, I know many in the jazz community consider Rudy Van Gelder, you know, recording genius, what have you. Uh, but there's also a lot of people that's outspoken against his techniques and his recording uh, process. Uh, you know, you will find a lot of these recordings, there's a lot of uh, a distortion on trumpets and pianos and and it's, you know, it's kind of a, it, it is a very live feel because most of, most of everything was recorded live. But uh, a lot of people sometimes complain about, you know, how he uh, presented uh, the music. Uh, Charles Mingus, the, the famous jazz bassist, even said he didn't care for how Rudy uh, Van Gelder made him and his instrument sound. So the, the 90s release is terrible. Uh, you know, if it's the only thing you got, I would go out and, seek out something else. Now, the 2000, I also have the 2003 SACD release. This is from Capital uh, Blue Note, and it says Rudy Van Gelder did the, the CD, or the SACD mastering as well. This is basically a less louder version of the, the standard CD that was released in the 90s. Um, harsh, uh, the, symbol, the symbols are like way crispy. The mids are too forward, and it's also loud. So uh, the one advantage of this and the CDs is obviously quiet because there's no surface noise from vinyl. But outside of that, um, I would avoid. I mean, if you can pick this up for you know a couple bucks, maybe. But or if you're a completist, get it. But for sound quality, I would skip. Now the next version, going up the ladder, is this Blue Train John Coltrane uh, 1993. Mastered a capital version. I believe it was mastered by Wally Talget. I think that's his name. I maybe pronounced it wrong. Uh, but his initials aren't on here. Some versions have his initials etched in the um, outer groove, and this one does not. Uh, this doesn't sound bad. Um, it sounds, you know, it's fairly dull. It sounds, it almost sounds like a flat transfer. Um, you know, if you pick this up fairly, you know, cheap, it's worth getting. 
Uh, if you throw it on, you're not going to say, wow, that sounds bad, it's harsh, whatever. Uh, it's just a fairly straightforward reissue. So, uh, you know, but it's not, it's not near the top of my list for, uh, for the reissues of this album. Next is the 1984 DMM uh, Cadre Rogue Pressing from France. Uh, direct metal mastering was a big thing in the 80s. Uh, I believe this is digital based. The, 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 it was mastered off the digital transfers at Capital, whoever uh, made at the time. Um, this actually sounds pretty good. I picked up quite a few DMMs, blue notes from the 80s, quite cheap, and now they're starting to go up in price. Uh, if you see some in decent shape or even sealed, they're 40, 50 bucks. Whereas when I was buying this, you know, I think I got it for uh, you know 7.99 at a used record store. Um, it's not, it's not 180 grams. It's a regular standard vinyl, but the vinyl is really quiet. It's uh, fairly well balanced. It's just a tad digital sounding, but nothing like the uh, Rudy Van Gel Gelder remasters. It, if you have this and you just want to put it on and play, it, it's a good sounding record. So I know a lot of people, especially Blue Note collectors, have issues with this, this DMM series, but I'm one who thinks that most of the ones that I have actually sound pretty good. Next in line is the Bernie Grumman 2014 75th Anniversary Series. Uh, I only have it in the inner sleeve because I have the cover framed over there on my wall. I used the frame from the 75th series. It's 180 grams, but Bernie did master it off uh, digital transfers. And you probably need to get used to that because that's probably moving forward how a lot of these recordings, these historical recordings are gonna be done. Uh, Bernie did a great job on the Pink Floyd catalog. They were from a, a digital transfer. And, uh, and he really did a nice job here on the uh, 75th series. Sounds smooth. It sounds balanced. It's not uh, crispy or etchy. Um, if you just want a general copy, there's some, there's many out there still in the record stores. Just pick one up. If they're cheap, um, you'll be fine with it. You know, just throw it on, play it. Uh, Bernie did a nice job with this, and uh, I recommend getting it. If, if you know, if you just want to grab one, it's cheap. Next is the acoustic or acoustic sounds, but uh, analog productions, 45 RPM, a two record set of uh, Coltrane. And this was uh, mastered by Hoffman and Gray. So Steve Hoffman and Kevin Gray. Um, this is a really, really good sound edition, sounding edition. Um, 45 RPM, I'm not a big purchaser of 45 RPM audiophile records. I prefer to get the 33 because I, I don't like getting up and down every 10 minutes or so. Um, in comparing sound quality on, you know, on the versions of 45s that I have also the same mastering of the 33, I can't really tell a difference. 45 seem to be a little louder, maybe a little more punchier, but I'm perfectly fine with the 33 edition. But I do have this in 45 and that sounds wonderful. Uh, the only gripe I have about about this version now i don't this i've had this two three years i don't know if the new versions that ap is selling if they're if they're repressing them it's like this but it, it comes in a single sleeve so there's a lot of wear and tear right there with the two records and then acoustic sounds puts you know puts their little catalog inside so as you can see there's a little split there but as far as uh sounding wise it's a great record um you know it's a little on a pricey side uh, retail, but uh, it's worth getting if you really want a high quality uh, version. Next is the Classic Records. This came out in 2008. This is the Clarity 45 RPM single sided box set. So I'm going to go into this a little more. This, this version is mastered by uh, Bernie Grunman and it's 200 grams clear, Clarity Clear Vinyl. And, and they're, it's only pressed on one side. So one side is blank, as you can see. And one side, like this is side one, it has blue train on it, the one song on it. That's one reason why I'm not big on the 45 RPMs. And this is even worse because there's four of them. But uh, this thing really sounds good. Uh, 
I purchased this here a while back and it was still sealed. The one thing I've noticed about buying classic records that are still sealed is they come kind of dusty dirty. Um, I put this thing on and just used a brush when I first got it and it was crackly. I had to put it to a record, my record cleaning machine and then it's quiet as a mouse. So something in the manufacturing process or the sleeve manufacturing causes a lot of debris to, to get on the records. But this is a great sounding record. Uh, the notes that I took, very smooth, very airy. It has a, 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 a very quiet once you clean it. And the, the sound stage is huge. So it's very good bass. You know, a lot of, I like a lot of the reissues because they are being mastered with modern equipment uh, in mind. You know, back in the day when Rudy Van Gelder and the, you know other mastering engineers, they had to pay attention, especially to the low end, because the phonographs, the general public phonographs that were purchased, you know, probably at department stores, uh, would sometimes skip if, if the bass was too much. And they had to keep that in mind when mastering, so kind of keep the dynamics more on an even playing field. Now, even your budget turntables can handle uh, you know, dynamic, uh, a high dynamic range when it comes to sound, really deep bass or super high trebles. So that's one reason I like the um, reissues because you know I like a lot of bass, a lot of it gives a lot of more warmth and feel. That's just my opinion. I know some people prefer the original. That's great, but I do like the reissues better just for the low end. But I. If you can get this thing, it's probably, I've seen them, you know, around 700 bucks on eBay and various other auction sites now. Um, you know, it comes with a nice cover. Uh, of course, I ripped the, the banner when I opened it. And, uh, you know, this has a, has a Kuzma promotion piece in it. And this one still has the postcard where you can register it and win a free classic records test pressing. So this is a nice package. This is a great sounding package. Um, the only fault I have is 45 RPM. And you know, even this one, you have to get up even more than a, than a two record set. But this is, this is a great sounding edition. And my favorite is the music matters. I got the 33 here. It, this, this, this is the complete package. Um, this is basically like a tone poet. You got the, the um, you know, gatefold cover with session pictures, uh, 180 grams. This one was master, I'm pretty sure it was Kevin Gray. But... Oh no, Ron, Rod Rambach and Kevin Gray, yeah. So this, this, um, this is the one to get if you, you want to pay some money. Now, the Music Matter pressings are expensive now because they're no longer, they haven't been reissuing anything for a couple of years now. They're, they're concentrating on the, uh, you know, the, the Blue Note reissues. But uh, this thing is quiet as a mouse. Uh, it's got all the bass, the punch, everything smooth. It's just a, just a fan, fantastic version. Now, I do suspect that Blue Note's going to reissue this in some form or another, it's either in their classic vinyl series or they may come up with some special edition Tone Poet box set or double LP um, edition. Uh, this is, you know, this is one of their most popular titles ever. So uh, they, you know, they're now going into the, uh, the the classic series into a lot of the '70s uh, jazz realm and but. They must have plans for this because I cannot see them just skipping over this. So, again, um, the the seventy fifth anniversary is a fine addition. Just pick it up if you just want the music. Uh, but if you want something more than that, you know, want to pay some premium prices. These various audio file reissues will are, sound wonderful. Um, I hope to do more videos like this. So please hit subscribe, hit the like button. If you like this kind of content, also um, in the comments, leave your thoughts on my on my comments on these various reissues. If you've heard some of the original versions, how do you think they compare to this, or your your favorites? So I'm looking forward to that. 
Again, thanks for tuning in, and we will see you next time.